Hello friends and welcome to my YouTube channel Simply Stocks and today I am going to talk about the 5 biggest market recession that has taken place in India and the 5 biggest fall in the markets in India over the last 30 years. So let's get started. First of all a disclaimer that this is not a stock recommendation. People taking any position into any share that I talk about should do that with their own due diligence and research and I am not in favor or against any company that I talk about. Now about the first five biggest market declines of the last 30 years and the first one that comes to mind is the Harshad Mehta scam of 1992. Uh, most of the avid investors and retail players of today would be having an understanding even though they might not have been in the market during those times that in 1992 Harshad Mehta manipulated stock prices of a number of stocks in a period of one year to one year and a half and this scam was of more than 400 crores at that time of at that time I mean uh, about 30 years back which you could say today it could amount to something like 3000 crores or so on current valuations of uh, prices the sensex fell from 4500 at the top to 2400 that has been a fall of over 40, 50%, nearly 45% fall in the sensex in the space of few months. And index remained in slumber till 1997. So we had this crash and over the next 4-5 years, not many people or investors or HNIs or FIIs got into the market. And hence the index remained in a range bound fashion down by around 30 to 40 percent post these crises and there has been a movie made on this uh, uh, this fiasco that took place in the Hachar Mehta scam and its name is Gafla and you can go ahead and watch that movie as well it's I believe is one of the better movies in the business world and it shows how the scam took place the second scam that I'm going to talk about uh, is of the Ketan Parekh scam and he was regarded as a trainee or you could say as a trainee to Harshad Mehta and eventually 8 years later in 2000-2001 uh, Ketan Parekh came out with this uh, another scam similar to what Harshad Mehta did and the second sex uh, fell over 8% in a day and this was a scam of over 1000 crore and this was a kind of a pump and dump uh, scheme that he pumped up prices of some of the stocks and eventually dumped the stocks on one fine day after the prices had gone up big time. He did circular trading in K10 stocks regarded as the Ketan Parik top 10 stocks. So he made money in one and then uh, took out the money and then in, and put that money into another stock and so on and so forth in these 10 stocks circularly. He put in the money and exited from the stocks very quickly after making a good sum of uh, money. He was not quite as ardent investors would do that investing in some of the stocks for a longer period of time. He was just trying to shore up the prices of these stocks and then make money and get out of them. So he got funds from banks and promoters in order to do this and this is why it was regarded as one of the biggest scams. He did all this similar to what happened uh, with the Harshad Mehta scam in which the bank's receipts were used or fake bank receipts were used in order to scam uh, innocent investors and uh, shore up the prices of some of the stocks and then eventually sell them off. So this was, uh, this was pretty good uh, uh, till it lasted between 99 till end of 2000. But then uh, the dot-com bubble bursted and uh, so did uh, this uh, euphoria of Ketan Parekh's uh, performance. Then we had the 2008 global financial crisis or recession which also took toll on the Indian markets and uh, Sensex fell from 21,000 at the peak to 8,000. So it, it nearly lost 65% of its value and this is regarded as one of the biggest falls, probably the biggest fall in the Indian stock market and second biggest fall in the, uh, you can say the world economic history or the global stock market history after the Great Depression of 1929 to 32. 
so this fall was of around uh, as I mentioned around 60 odd percent and most of the stocks fell between 50 to 100 percent in 99 percent scariest scariest fall of the last 15 years for sure and the housing bubble burst in USA uh, which led to this housing crisis and a ripple effect all across the world uh, the precursor was the boom of 2003 to 7 in which a lot of houses and infrastructure was built over these four years period across the globe even in india and a lot of infrastructure company like bhel port companies like aban offshore etc went up like thousand percent eight hundred percent two thousand percent and really aban offshore went up from hundred rupees to five thousand rupees in a matter of a couple of years or so two three years so this was the this was the kind of moves that we saw in some of the shares a uh, stock like suzlon energy went up from 4 rupees to 400 rupees in no time and eventually that had to burst and we had that in 2008 around uh, january when the market started to fall from nifty started to fall from 6150 levels and eventually it bottomed out in 2009 when nifty ended up at around 2300 or so 2600 also so this was a kind of capitulation uh, that we had in all sorts of stocks whether it was large mid and small cap and it was very scary to see every day prices fall and not one day that the prices went up everything bottomed out in 2009 february march and from there on in we have seen a tremendous up move in census and nifty i mean the nifty was at uh, very low levels in fact around 2300 2500 levels 2550 and today nifty is at 12,005, nearly 12,500. so a 10,000 move on nifty is already taken place in the last 10 years which is absolutely tremendous the next fall i'm going to talk about is the india recession that took place between 2011 early part of 2011 uh, till August 2013. It was an economic slowdown that began in 2010-11 uh, with the infrastructure and capital goods slowdown and less houses being built. Uh, the policy initiative was very muted as, as many called policy paralysis and nothing came out from the government and infrastructure slowed down, growth slowed down and Nifty fell again from 6300 levels in 2010 October all the way to 4650 so there was a complete fall of around 23 24 percent in the nifty stocks the large cap the small caps were butchered out of shape so three years of stalled growth and nothing came out and then in 2013 august us fed led the recovery with its announcement of quantitative easing or qe in which a lot of money came into the markets of global markets all across the globe and especially in emerging markets like the BRIC nations, Brazil, Russia, India and China, a lot of money came into and hence invested into the market and we have seen how the small cap index have gone up after uh, uh, the money that came into the market uh, from this quantitative easing and hence we saw the small cap index from around 5000 4500 levels went up all the way to 20200 and only after that we have seen a, a little bit of uh, you can say a little bit of downfall from those levels but still we are maintaining a decent amount of level considering where we were in 2013 So apart from the 2011 to 13 crisis of India, we have seen if we, if we go to the fifth crisis, the China crash of 2016. So we saw that there was a bubble between 2013 August till 2016. So three year mega run in the mid and small cap section of the Indian markets and in the Asian market. 
then we had a 30% fall in two weeks in July of 2015. Uh, it, the culmination was in 2016. So the fall began in uh, around June, July 2015. Although the small cap index started falling in March 2015, and we saw one year of total crash of the stock market. And Nifty bottomed out at around 6,820 levels from around 9,100 levels. That was on the budget day and we saw 23%, 25%, 26% fall in the nifty. Just the nifty stocks where the small cap index was also butchered out of shape. And this was because of the China uh, booming uh, infrastructure market that fell apart with the housing crisis. A little bit of housing crisis that took place in China at that point of time. And it all percolated down to countries like India and other parts of Asia like Hong Kong etc. So the market fell and completely was butchered out of shape by Feb 2016 and then we saw uh, that big move even after the GST and all till 2018. And post 2018 we have seen the fall that has taken place already. So what we believe uh, and what I believe as an analyst is that we could see uh, we have probably seen the uh, worst of the small cap index crash and now we are seeing a process of bottoming out and now uh, the markets are coming back into shape the broader markets I'm talking about yes the nifty is up and it's at the all-time high but I think nifty will consolidate over the next couple of years till around early part of 2022 and we could see the small and mid cap uh, perform really better over the next couple of years so this was my video on the biggest falls in the sensex over the last 30 years please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can get my videos straight away when i post it thanks a lot for watching